Ernie Jackie. My fellow citizens and residents, it is a pleasure to communicate with you through our popular interactive program, Leadership Matters. This is being aired across multiple media platforms, such as ZIZ Radio and Television, Facebook, and YouTube. This program is an excellent example of good governance at work. We promise better engagement, better information sharing, education and collaboration between the people and government. Leadership Matters, my press conferences and parliament allow us to keep faith with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Our regular dialogue with the people to multiple forms and media is part of the consultative democracy that has become the norm since 2015. Tonight I will talk to you about the measures we are implementing to improve the condition of our workers, to protect their jobs, and to create new job opportunities, especially for our young people. Through prudent management, we are able to do this while ensuring the health and safety of our people. Over a year ago, we made a promise to you. We promised to build more homes, to create more jobs, and to keep our streets safe. Tonight, I want to share with you how we are delivering on those promises. We are building on our record of delivering for you. We are building on our record of over 3,000 housing solutions delivered to families affected by hurricanes through the popular Hurricane Relief Program. We are expanding support to those impacted by COVID-19 through the Poverty Alleviation Program and Income Support Relief on a scale never before attempted in this country. We continue with God's help to use our best efforts to manage the COVID-19 pandemic. As your Prime Minister, I am committed to service. I recommit to lead justly, with mercy, and walk humbly, consistent with the guidance found in the book of Micah. I remain resolute in my commitment to help the vulnerable, reaffirm the dignity of the poor, encourage entrepreneurship, and I promise to continue to work with all for a better and brighter future. That is why I am so passionate about creating jobs and looking after our people. Jobs are really about human dignity and enhancing the quality of life of our people. That is what your Team Unity Government will continue to do. We will deliver real jobs. Our stellar performance of the fiscal affairs of St. Kitts and Nevis has been recognized in the IMF Article 4 concluding statement that puts us ahead of every other country in the hemisphere in terms of our fiscal strength at the start of the pandemic. We receive this accolade because we manage wisely. We paid off Labour's IMF debt of $117 million. We paid down over $200 million on the land for debt swap to reclaim lands for the poor, and still we were at the top of the class in fiscal buffers. Using these lands reclaimed on behalf of our people, we were able to create jobs by building, for example, a brand new community center at Lodge Estate, building homes and distributing lands to many of our citizens and residents situated at Lodge, Otley's, and Kayon to name a few. Indeed, we have been focused on doing the right things the right way and correcting the wrongs of the past. People around the region have marveled at our ability to do as much as we have done, especially during this difficult time. We are delivering a second stimulus package this month, targeted at the poor, the vulnerable, and disadvantage. 
We are helping small businesses like the passenger bus operators and protecting their jobs, helping battered women and families with disabilities, maintaining support to our farmers and fishers, and creating better opportunities for more of our street vendors in our city and rural areas. Such a comprehensive response at a time of an unprecedented crisis is unheard of in our country. We will continue our efforts to deliver the stronger and safer future that our people deserve. During these difficult times, we will continue to look after those in need. Tonight, I am pleased to report that the second stimulus package is being rolled out nicely. As of yesterday, 2,209 applications for income support have been received by the Ministry of Finance and are now being processed. By Friday, we will begin to disperse the first 1,000 income support. Fuel support payments will start on Friday, as will the support to households with persons living with disabilities. I must remind you that not every application will be processed by Friday, but every week applications will be processed until every qualified person is paid. There is no need for anxiety. Our helpful staff at the Ministry of Finance is available to update and assist you. We are working to create new opportunities, especially for our young people and to keep our people safe. Our plan to transform Bastia into a most beautiful city, which allows for safe movement of vehicular and pedestrian traffic is now being implemented. Our sidewalks along the Bay Road, Fort Street, Central Street and Princeton Street in the heart of Bastia have been reclaimed for safe use. It is a big relief to all of us, but especially to the elderly, to persons living with disabilities who many times were forced into the road, exposed to harm and injury from incoming traffic. We have resolved this problem by relocating the vendors to the people's market. My government is encouraged by the widespread public approval for this major development in Bastia. We are seeking to reorganize the city of Bastia to bring more structure and order so that we can improve safety and, of course, facilitate economic growth. Turning to our food truck vendors to create a better, more business-friendly atmosphere, the food truck vendors will soon be relocated from Independence Square to a better and enhanced venue and not Independence Square Street. Compliance with the health protocols will be the order of the day. A new food court will soon be available. On Sunday afternoon, I toured the site, accompanied by Mr. Dre Farrier, Chairman of the Street Vending Committee, Police Commissioner Brandy, and Superintendent Henry. I was impressed by the progress made to date. Electricity poles and lines are already drawn to the site. Plumbing system is being organized, complete with sanitary facilities. These are necessary amenities that were not previously available. In addition, a gazebo will be erected to create an impressive ambience. Security cameras and extra lighting will be installed in the area to ensure enhanced safety. In summary, something better than what was will be available to vendors and patrons. Yesterday, Monday, we met with the proposed vendors for the new site. They shared their views in a candid discussion with my government. I can see them now. Sheldon Gittens, Latrice Christopher, Errol Phipps, Samantha Liddy, David Heiliger, Najma Prentice, Gaia Pontine, and Pedro Wilson. Good things are happening. 
more jobs will come as we further open up our country to more economic activities. Let me record my gratitude to the vendors for their understanding. Equally, we owe a debt of gratitude to the multi-ministerial team, the Urban Development Corporation, Sustainable Development, Public Works, Agriculture, Office of the Prime Minister. They have provided the best solution to a problem that no government before us was able to effectively manage. This is part of our plan to revitalize and reorganize downtown Bastia, making it one of the most beautiful, thriving, orderly, and clean cities in the world. Turning now to other areas of economic activity, I must stress that a strong business sector creates more jobs and more opportunities for our young people. And that is why we want a thriving country in which every community is alive and well. We support and encourage entrepreneurship, especially among our people, the young and talented seeking to carve out a prosperous future. The hundreds of loans approved for small and medium-sized enterprises through the Fresh Start program provide ample evidence of our tangible support. Tax concessions to small and medium-sized enterprises again demonstrate our support. Our waiver of stall fees at the people's vendors market and fees associated with the North Square Street location is another example of my government's commitment to help small and medium-sized enterprises. It is our commitment to the success of SMEs that led my government to transform Black Rocks, creating boots for our sons and daughters to ply their trade in craft, in clothing, food, and beverage. At Black Rocks, we created a masterpiece of a deck and lookout area, now popularized for weddings, sightseeing, photography, etc. I must commend the young architect again, Miss Carissa Roberts, for designing that masterpiece. The more visitors to Block Rocks, the higher the patronage and sales for businesses there. Similarly, we are creating farmers and vending markets in key areas to support our farmers, our fisher folks, and indeed other small businesses. We started last Saturday at Bowyer Strip, Connery, and Pan Road. We shall improve on the temporary arrangements in the near future. Some wonderful things are about to happen again under my team, Unity Government. And we appeal for private sector support as we put our country on a renewed path to the stronger and safer future. I encourage the patrons to continue to give strong support to our small businesses. The truth is, the, the truth is, no place in St. Kitts and Nevis is too far. Distance is relative. I encourage our vendors to offer quality products, quality food and beverages, and indeed quality service. I encourage them to get vaccinated, thereby protecting themselves. In the same way as the Ministry of Agriculture, has popularized night vending at our public market. Innovations will come to these new sites, attracting increasing business, jobs, and higher income to all vendors. Anyone who is displaced as, at this time has access to the broad range of social safety nets, which my government has in place, including PAP, that is $500 per month, our income support of $1,000 for the next three months, and we are also providing support for households with persons living with disabilities. None will be left behind by my government. All are encouraged to contribute to a stronger and safer future for themselves and their families. You can contribute through your industry, 
creativity, innovation, and talent. The best help is self-help. The best hand up is a job. That is why we are working hard to put our country back to work. That is why as Prime Minister, I have taken a personal interest in ensuring that these bold decisions we have taken are implemented in a manner that advances the well-being and welfare of all. A note with respect to the cruise industry. <clears throat> Thursday was a red letter day for St. Kitts and Nevis. It marked the inaugural visit of Seaborne Odyssey, the first cruise vessel to return to St. Kitts after a 16-month suspension of cruise business. We are obviously encouraged by this development and the fact that we are scheduled to receive more vessels this year. However, we know the vagaries the industry faces with the changing landscape of COVID-19. Things can change at a moment's notice. We are cautiously optimistic regarding the cruise tourism for 2021. Six calls from cruise vessels in the Celebrity Cruise and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines are scheduled in the month of August. If there is no change, this will be a significant and positive increase over last year when no cruise vessel, vessels disembark passengers. Cruise arrivals mean better days for the tour operators and the employees. It means the return to work of hundreds of employees in restaurants and to other service providers. We have taken the necessary precautions to limit interaction between cruise passengers and the general public. This is a precautionary strategy to safeguard our people from the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. The good news is that several businesses which participate in the cruise industry have encouraged their employees to get vaccinated, thereby reducing the probability of them becoming infected. We continue to examine the bubble tours to see how we can safely extend them to more locations, for example, Port Sante in due course. We ask for patience as we work through the challenges and we urge all of our people wanting to do business with cruise passengers to become vaccinated, thus protecting themselves and their loved ones. Yes, we are moving in a careful way to fully open up every area of socioeconomic life. We must be mindful that COVID-19 is still with us. Our best defense is vaccination. We will continue to open up and promote our economy, but always in a way that is safe. Finally, let me welcome the panelists here with me this evening. Mr. Ron Collins, our Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture et al. Mr. Comrel Henry, Superintendent of Police, and Mr. Austin Drefarier, Head of the Interministerial Committee on Street Vending. I trust that you will find tonight's edition very informative, and I look forward to your questions, your comments, and concerns. Thank you.